All right, so there's an issue in jiu-jitsu. It's an, it's an issue for every guard passer, every person who is in, uh, likes to be on top. That it, Sunshine knows, it's this. This pesky grip here is very, very difficult to deal with. Um, for those of you who have seen some of the lapel passing we do from here, that's one way to deal with it. But we're gonna figure out a, a easier to set up version that you can start implementing right away. So the reason this grip is so annoying is because there's no guaranteed way to break the grip. I, if I pull up at the sleeve, it's no guarantee it's gonna break. If I pull at the wrist, there's no guarantee it's gonna break. The only way you can like guaranteed break it is bringing your shin across his ankle, putting your knee on the ground, and then like twisting your foot off. But then it puts you down on your knees, not in the best position to keep passing. Because passing from your knees isn't very effective unless you're like really committed to pressure and doing these movements. So it takes you out of like the advantageous top position where I have lateral mobility and the ability to close distance and back out and have like so much control of the fight. So it's like kind of risky to do that as well. It's a good way to like reset, but not a great way to continue passing. So what we're gonna do, first thing, is commit to a really straight leg. The straighter my leg is, the harder it's gonna be for him to maintain his De La Hiva grip. So I wanna keep my leg straight, but I do it at the same time that I grab his ankle and I grab his pants, and I'm pulling it up towards my stomach. Now this is very important, because most of the time when people show leg drags, it's like from a position like this, and it's about like pushing the knee in and then pulling it across. But this is very difficult to pull someone's leg across like this. What's very easy is to just straighten their leg up and lock it onto your belt like this. So the reason I grab at the heel is because that's the longest lever that I can use to straighten someone's leg. People's legs and hamstrings are one of their strongest muscles, so you need to use every mechanical advantage you can get by lifting here like this, and I lift it just high enough to get my hip underneath it and then flex my hips into it to straighten his leg. So I'm not just pulling it straight up. It's not gonna work. I lift a little bit right above my belt line, bring my hips in, stand up straight. Now notice my left leg is not close to his butt. If it's close to his butt, he's gonna grab my ankles and trip me up and over. So I keep my left leg staggered back as I do this. Lift to my belt line, extend my hips, and keep my foot just out of range. He may try and reach for it even, but I'm just gonna pay attention because I know that's his main goal. When you do this position, people are gonna be trying to get to that leg. From here, he's not able to lock the De La Hiva in super tight because as I step in, and lift, I'm turning my hips. See that motion here? This is very important. As I lift my hips, I'm turning and straightening my leg. So that now as he tries to throw his De La Hiva hook in, there's no real catch for his inner foot to catch on my thigh, right? What we're trying to avoid is him getting me to a position where I'm broken down, he has the De La Hiva, I'm bent over, and he can easily elevate or break my balance and start attacking. So I plant my foot and I bring it close to his butt get control of the opposite leg, lift to here. Okay, see how I kind of turn from like that way to this way? This angle is very important. And I need to make sure that the instep is off of my thigh. Once I get it straight like this, now I'm just bringing it to my outside hip, okay? This is a lot easier than this. Much less movement. And as I lift my hips underneath, I don't have to really use my arm strength. I can just get his leg extended. And this hand is just stopping it from going back that way. And I'm just turning here. That's when I change my grip to a downward push. And I just start sprawling out, keeping my pressure directly down so that as he tries to turn and shrimp into me, he can't actually shrimp because I'm sitting on his hips and then I'm dropping into a pass position, okay? This is not the conventional way to do a leg drag, but it is very effective in the current De La Hiva climate, I would say. So if you feel like you can't get this foot off just through this motion here, which you should as you turn, you can always just give it a little push first and then proceed to the rest of the technique, but you won't really need to. Just make sure that your base is very strong, your feet aren't too close together, and that you're getting his heel right above your belt line, almost like you're trying to rest his heel right in this, like your kangaroo pouch or something. Here, lift, straight up, using my hips to get underneath, and then bring it to this hip. Now, if he's really quick, he could let go of my pants and start trying to throw this leg in front. 
What's good about this is when my arm is straight and I just drop like this, this foot has nothing to catch on. There's no arm to catch on. There's no head for it to get in front of. It's literally, I'm just a straight wall here. So this foot is easily guided past as well. I sit down on his thigh. Once I get his knee past my, our center line, that's the time to drop and put pressure to actually pass his guard, okay? Remember we talk about the center line a lot. If we split him in half here, once it's like this, he has to actually do a big body movement to recover. If I don't pass it past the center line, he can just throw his legs over and he ha there's a lot of defenses. So this is the position we're in. You can pop the foot if you want, not super necessary. This is what's necessary. Foot coming off the, th in the hamstring, this foot straight, cupping at the ankle, locking here and then dropping my weight. As he starts to recover, this hand is just ready to block in case he tries to throw that leg. If he turns away from me, no problem. I'm still collapsing, looking for seatbelt control or just pulling him directly to side control. Okay? Any questions about how that works? Yes? When uh, you're passing it over, are you pushing it? Straight, straight down. Okay, so, this one? Yeah, I, I don't like trying to bring it like this. Yeah, it's just straight, like, the, yeah, I'm not trying to hook it here like this. Not as important. It's mostly about dropping your hips into this on top of his hamstring. Here. It serves the same purpose, but it stops him from being able to be active with his hips and have mobility. Whereas if I shelf it here, he has a ton of hip mobility to bring that leg in front. That doesn't mean that this pass doesn't work, but... It's one less thing you have to deal with when you're here instead. As he tries to do that same motion, it's a lot harder and he can only get it about halfway and it lets me drop my weight more effectively. Okay, any other questions? Let's give it a shot, one, two, three. So give some live reactions from bottom. That doesn't mean defend the position, it just means engage your muscles a little bit. So see how her instep didn't pop off your hamstring, yeah. that's super important. So the way you do that is as you get her leg vertical mm -hmm. and it's in front of your hips, take little steps until that foot pops off. Now, just drop your weight and straighten your right arm. So before you drop, this hand, I know you, your hands, yeah, yeah. that's your bad hand, but if it was good, like this, this little flare down okay. and turn, and then I drop with my hips forward so her knee goes up towards her face and then we can start going chest to chest. You stop that by taking little steps forward with your left foot. Yep. And then drop your hips directly behind his knee so his knee goes towards his face. <clears throat> so see how you're, you're kind of falling into no traditional leg drag position? Bring your hips directly towards his face as well. Now sit. Yes. That's what we're looking for. And then underhook's perfect. So instead of grabbing at the pants, one, at, one hand is at the pants, the other at the heel, and that's gonna clear it. Straight, yes, and don't, try and avoid that. So it's, it's weird, I know it feels good to go in front, right. but it's actually better to do this and just gra grab here and then just flare your palm into it, and his foot will stay on that top, okay. like this. Yeah, the reason for that is now I'll, well, I'll explain it in a second, but basically you can also stack him now. If you put it behind you, you can't go into a stack secondarily, but if you keep it in front, you can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Showing leg drags though, right? Not, but not just any leg drag. I know, it's not just any leg drag. So, like yep, Dele Hiva. Nice. So the goal here is to deal with people who get these super tight leg drag positions. So I'm focusing on getting this foot. People don't want to give me this leg. Well, because they think the leg drag's coming. If you start going like this, they're going to anticipate it. But if you just pull straight up, you, you can get it straight a lot of times. And even if they curl and defend this by hugging in tight, I'm bringing your heel to my belt and then lifting to get it straight. And now instead of leg dragging like this, I'm leg dragging here, which you'll understand when we go into the next technique. And instead of like, instead of dropping my weight back like you would for a leg drag, I'm bringing my hips forward pressuring here yeah. so that you don't have the ability to shrimp towards me once I start c compressing. Yeah. Whereas if I go here, it's more about like this backwards pressure and then I can start closing the distance, but there's a moment where you can start bringing that other leg in front to defend in some way. Yeah. 
Whereas if I'm like this and drop. It feels different because you're blurring your knee and shoulder together. Right, and you just kind of sit on them like this and then you can collapse. So the, this is, you have to make sure if they keep their instep, and I'm on, like I'm here, but the instep is still on my leg. I didn't break it. I just take little hops this way, but keeping my leg just out of reach from the hand. And even if they do grab it, it's okay because we're just collapsing them here, and they're not really in a good sweeping position, anyways. Yeah. And it's okay if they underhook because they're not really in a half deep half or in a real position because both their legs are up front. So them underhooking just actually helps you secure side control because they lose their ability to turn away and bail to a back escape. If they, if they don't underhook, they can still try and turtle, but if they underhook, they can't. So instinctively people do it, but it's bad for them to do. So Juno, not like that. That's normal, perfect leg drag form. But for what we're doing, the reason we don't go in front like this is because if I go here, it's impossible for me to go into a double under position or a stack. But if I leave my hand on the outside like this, as I bring his leg up and come here, if he starts to turn the angle back in, it's very easy for me to get his legs up and get him to a super stack position. So that's the only difference. Like this is like backwards pressure to keep his leg. And then you only start putting pressure once your chest actually connects, that's where the pressure comes. But with this one, it's straight. And I go here and I drop my weight. I'm putting pressure on his hips already. He's gonna instantly start panicking, trying to push me off of him. And that's when mega stacks can come in, which we're gonna go into next. Yeah.